Statistics and Excel, Poisson Distribution, Potholes in Road Example. Get ready, taking a deep breath, holding it in for 10 seconds, looking forward to a smooth, soothing Excel. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, uh, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our crunchy numbers is my cardio product line. Now, I'm not saying that subscribing to this channel, crunching numbers with us, will make you thin, fit, and healthy or anything. However, it does seem like it worked for her. Just saying. So, you know, subscribe, hit the bell thing, and buy some merchandise. So you can make the world a better place by sharing your accounting instruction exercise routine. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. We are in Excel. If you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay because we'll basically build this from a blank worksheet. But if you do have access, three tabs down below. Example, practice blank. Example, in essence, answer key, practice tab, having pre-formatted cells so you can get to the heart of the practice problem. Blank tab, basically a blank worksheet. So for our image here, which you don't really need for the practice problem. So we can practice format in the cells within Excel as we work through the practice problem. Let's go to the example tab to get an idea of where we will be going. We're looking at the Poisson distribution once again, oftentimes examples related to line rating situations as we saw in a prior presentation. But we can also have situations over space. So in this case, we're talking about potholes in a road thinking about the mean number of potholes the average number of potholes being 20 for 100 miles of road as opposed to a line waiting situation where we were saying how many people will show up over a certain interval of time let's go back to the blank tab now and populate some of our data up top so i'm going to go into a1 let's first format the entire worksheet like we normally do selecting the triangle right click it on the selected area we're going to format the cells i'm going to go to currency negative numbers bracketed and red no dollar sign i'm going to get rid of the decimals for now and add them as i need them okay let's go to the home tab font group and make the whole thing bold as well you don't have to do that but i will do that all right so here's our conditions we're going to say that the mean potholes potholes per 100 miles per i'm going to say per miles so that i can put them in a separate cell i'm going to make a a little bit larger so the mean number of potholes i'm going to say is 20 per 100 miles okay so now what i would like to do is kind of imagine as we did last time that we were actually going out and counting the potholes per uh, 100 mile now in this case to do that to get a random generated number we have to already have the mean but in practice you might not know the mean right what would what would we do to start this process we might go out and count the potholes for every 100 mile interval and try to and try to see what's the what how many potholes are in each of those hundred mile mile intervals and then with our data we might plot our data to then see if it conforms with a poisson distribution and if it does the poisson distribution might be a way for us to to more easily make projections and predictions into the future about the pothole situation so let's do a random number generation which will mirror or mimic us basically going out and counting the potholes to do that we're going to go into the data tab and we need the data analysis we saw turning that on last time if you don't have that you go to the file tab you go to the options down below and then you go to the add-ins and then the manage you want the excel add-ins and go and then you want the analysis tool kit that's the one we want Okay, so I'm gonna make A a little bit wider here. I'm gonna make my image uh, a little bit smaller. I'm gonna make column C a little bit smaller. I'm gonna put the data here. So this is gonna be my X data results. 
Let's format that first, Home tab, Font Group. I'm gonna make it black and white, which is our normal heading formatting. Let's center it as well. And then I'm gonna go into D2, because that's where I want the data to go. Insert, I'm sorry, not insert, data up top. And then we wanna go into the analysis and the data analysis. I'm gonna do a random number generation. And here's the criteria. I'm gonna put a one here because we just want one column. Number of random, uh, number of random numbers. Let's put, let's put a thousand again. So we're just gonna generate a thousand uh, numbers that we'll be doing. Those thousand numbers representing a thousand one hundred mile <laughs> tests that we did. So that might be a fairly large test. Let's put like five hundred, like five hundred uh, one hundred mile tests. Let's do that one. And then it's not going to be a discrete. We want it to give it to us in accordance with a Poisson distribution, which still has an element of randomness, but it's going to be distributed according to a Poisson distribution with the lambda, the mean, being, we're going to say 20. Now, again, in real life, we might not know the mean. We'd go out and count the potholes to basically figure this out, right? We would be counting every 100 miles uh, the number of potholes within each 100 mile frame. Let's go ahead and say, oh, where do I want it? The output, I want it to go right there. So that's where the output's gonna go. Okay, let's go okay and see what we get. So what's this mean then? It means that for the first 100 miles that we looked at, there were 18 potholes. Then there was 26 potholes in the second 100 mile space. The third mile, 100 mile space, uh, 21 potholes, 26 potholes in the next 100 mile space, and so on uh, and so forth. So now we can take this data and we can create our bins with it to see if we can see any patterns with that data and possibly if it corresponds to closely or relatively closely to some kind of distribution that we can make a function for, like the Poisson distribution. So let's say that we have our bins are, are going to be anywhere from, we're going to say, let's go from, I'll say zero, one, two, and I'm going to bring it all the way up to 100 here. So I'm going to select those three numbers, fill handle, drag it down to 100. Remember that in, in theory, there can be like an infinite number of potholes. The whole road could be a pothole, I guess, in theory, right? Because there's no upper limit if we're talking about a Poisson type distribution. But if the mean is 20, then you would expect you're not going to get, you know, it's going to be quite rare that you're going to have that you can have potholes more than like 100 potholes uh, in, in that interval, given if it's in a Poisson distribution uh, format. Now, remember, if, if we want the frequency, frequency, we could try to say I want to count these numbers and I could try to use a count if function equals count if brackets and the criteria range would be this i'm i'm going to hold down control shift down arrow getting down to the bottom control backspace going back to the top and then comma count that if the criteria is zero and i could say enter and copy that down now i'm not going to leave this as the way we do it because the other way is a spill function for the frequency I just want to show that sometimes this doesn't give us the result uh, that we would expect, right? So if I sum this up at the bottom by saying alt equals, I should get to 500 and I don't. And that's because sometimes I think that the distribution might give us a number that's not exactly, uh, not exactly uh, a whole number or something like that because it's not picking up all the numbers, which either means that it's not picking up one of these numbers or that there's some numbers that are actually higher than 100. So we could use a formula to try to make these all, all uh, exactly rounded numbers, but I find the other way we could do this, I'm gonna delete this data, is to use the frequency, which is a spill array formula instead. So the frequency equals the frequency tab, and then we want the data array which is gonna be here. I'm in uh, D2, Control Shift. I'm holding Control Shift down arrow, takes me to the bottom. Then I'm gonna 
hold down control and backspace to bring me back up. And then comma, the next argument are the bends, which are gonna be these bends. It's gonna look for these bends, control shift down, and then again, control backspace to bring me back to the top, closing it up and enter and it spills it now. So now we have a spill array uh, type of system. I'm gonna try to remove that last bit so it doesn't do that last one. Double clicking up top and say, what if I clip it at 101? Will it then stop that? It does. And now let's do the total, which will be alt equals, there's 500. So now it picked up all 500 of them and put them into the relevant bins, which is nice. Let's make this a header. I'm gonna to go to the home tab and say this is gonna be black and white and then uh, we can center it. So now I could graph this frequency, right? So I could say, let's take this frequency, control shift down, control, uh, well, hold on a second. Whoa, okay, Paso. Control shift down. I don't want the total though. All right, I'm just gonna select the whole thing. <laughs> and then I'm gonna insert. So let's go to the insert over here and we'll say that I'm gonna insert a chart. Let's make it a bar chart for the frequency. So there's what we have on the bar chart. Let's click into the chart. Chart design, I'm going to the data up top. So the data is good. I wanna edit this side, however, to pick up my bins on the left. So it picks up my bins and not just some generic bins. Control shift down and then uh, shift up so it doesn't shift up so it doesn't pick up the total and then enter okay and okay so there we have our distribution and you can see it's a little choppy here we don't have as, as much data but it looks like it might be conforming to uh the, you know the poisson type of distribution so it's it's not going to be perfect because there's still randomness involved in it. But if we can approximate what is happening here with the Poisson distribution, then we might be able to uh, use that. Now I can also do the percent of the total, percent uh, of total. Let's make this format paint home tab format painter here. I'm gonna take each of these numbers and say equals the frequency divided by the total 500 i'm going to make that second number absolute because i want to take each number divided by the total so i can say f4 and enter and then i'm going to make it a percent home tab numbers percentifying it and then double click on that copying it down and if i then double check that everything is done properly i'm going to delete this total and sum it up for the double check and it should come out to 100, which is going to be alt equals, will give us that sum function nice and easy. There's the 100. So I could make my frequency, my chart using this column as well. So I can select this column and I could say, okay, let's make our chart based on that. Insert and then charts, bar chart, boom, bar chart, boom. Let's do some formatting while I'm here on it. Data are this side. I wanna make sure that this is picking up our bends. Shift up and okay. So, so then we get the same kind of look and feel, but now on the percent basis, as opposed to the whole number basis. All right, so then let's do, let's take the, the, a couple stats on our data. I'm gonna make a skinny eye here, make a skinny eye. And then we're gonna say that this is gonna be the mean uh, calculation. So I can take the mean calculation of our data. So I'll say this equals the average shift nine go into our data, the whole data set, and, contr and control shift down arrow and enter. So now we've got it, the, the mean being 20, I'm gonna add some decimals 
it's not exactly 20 because remember we used the mean as a condition to populate the data but there's still randomness in the data that we populated so the mean of the actual data that we have is more like 20 point you know 14 uh, potholes per 100 miles and then we can calculate the variance let's do the variance with a p so it equals the variance and we'll take the variance of all of our data set, control shift down and enter. And let's add some decimals there. And you can see it's pretty close to the mean. And that's another indication that we might have something that would be, uh, we can represent abstractly with a Poisson distribution. Here's the variance. If it was a sample equals the variance S of our data and we'll add that a little bit more here so then we've got 1952 so you can see these so now if we're looking at this data we're saying okay so now we're ta we're talking about something that might conform uh, to a Poisson distribution because we have something that's happening over a certain uh, not time element but space in in terms of the road we would think that each instance of the pothole would be independent from other instances of the pothole and so on and so forth and when i graph it it looks kind of like a poisson distribution possibly could fit that and when i pick up the variance and the mean of the data they're pretty close to each other which means that we might benefit from making predictions based on the Poisson distribution curve into the future, right? So next time what we'll do is we'll then do the Poisson distribution, which, which will be a more perfect curve and and do some comparisons and see how, how well that relates to our actual data that we populated. And then think about, well, will, will, will that Poisson distribution then be useful to make predictions uh, as we extrapolate this information into the future for decision making?